Justice League Endless Winter Issue 2, Andy Lanning and Ron Mars writing with Howard Porter, Carmine DJ, Dominica on the art, of course with Marco Santucci on the flashback segment, which is not the start of this one, which makes sense given it's the ending and they're doing something mm -hmm. a little bit different. Uh, so, I mean, this is more or less what you think it's going to be, you know? Uh, a little bit oversized, but not super oversized like the 80 pages. No, no, um, and, but I do, I, I did enjoy the flow of it and it mm -hmm. wrapped everything up as it should. Because it is a, a bookend. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and missed, missed the Santucci stuff. Well, we do get it a little bit later, yeah, but yeah, not but, the start. Yeah. I, well, that's the thing. We, 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 we speculated that it was going to flash back to before the fight, and it did, yeah. but not as much as I thought. I thought we were going to get a full right. scene. We got like three panels of uh, Hippolyta giving Diana the costume, but, yeah. you know, we're still kind of right. I'll take the points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take so, the points. Uh, uh, so, I mean, you're kind of waiting throughout the fight, of course, for the various elements to show up. They, 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 they track the Frost King because he disappears again. They track him back to the, where the original fortress was. They go there, uh, just as so League all, with Hippolyta and Black Adam, are all there to fight. Uh, but then that's when the Viking swamp thing finally emerges and starts taking on the Frost King. Which... Uh, we, we get, like, a kaiju battle between Viking yeah. Swamp Thing and, and the Frost King Avatar. As the Justice League members are running around do, dealing yeah. with the ice, you know, monsters. The that creatures, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, neat stuff. Uh, the big thing, though, is that Hippolyta and Batman fall down a crevice mm -hmm. during everything, and they actually realize that even the main Frost King they've been fighting is not actually him. Even that's still an avatar. The real person right. is still in, like, a, an electric bubble beneath, right. beneath the uh, fortress. Uh, which is where a lot of the sort of the, the story kind of plays out its ending. Of course, right. up above, because uh, when Black Adam hears this, he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to go down and kill him then. And everyone okay. and everyone else is like, no, no, no murder. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to solve Wait, this another way. You, have you not learned your lesson, bro? <laughs> and, and I love the the um, the rivalry almost between Black Adam and Superman. Well, yeah, like Super, they, Superman They swoops, go nose to nose. Yeah, he swoops in, because obviously Superman's like one of the few beings there who can actually take him on on a one-on-one -on -one right. fight, and I, I felt that the Black Adam, so someone actually tweeted this to us as well this week, and I agree with this, is that it feels like the biggest thing being set up out of Endless Winter for the status quo going forward is the fact that Black Adam is now pissed at the Justice League and yep. the tension that's there because Superman stopped him from doing this. So I think that's going right. to play into whatever's happening cool. post-March. And we know... It looks like Black Adam's with the Justice League. Yeah, yeah. And this is stuff too. So, you know. That tension's going to be there. Out. Yeah, so. And, and no, but I just, I like it because it always had said that, you know, like Shazam's there be, for Superman because he can't handle magic stuff. And it's not that Superman can't handle magic things. It's that it affects him like it affects other people. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a weakness. But the idea but... of him being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and not fear Black Adam because it's not like... Black Adam's on a mop floor with him, you know. I just I like that that he doesn't have to back down from him, um, and so it's good. You never see, you never really see anybody trying to put Black Adam in his place outside of Billy. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I, I appreciate that there actually there's a, it seems that like there's a bit of a universe plan here where this is neatly yeah. setting up some of the character dynamics that are going to be in that new Justice League book come mm -hmm. March. So. Uh, I I dig that I dig that a bit because yeah. obviously at the end of the, the issue Black Adam's on TV saying ah this team of heroes is is at the mm -hmm. at its end they've been causing too much trouble and the world's in a shitty place because of it uh, just as the rest of the Justice League are struggling to fight off all the ice hordes uh, that's mm -hmm. when Aquaman shows up with his uh, his fire troll fire army <laughs> that yeah, yeah, yeah. he assembled so you know everything that was set up kind of comes together mm -hmm. uh, there's some banter between them um, ultimately. Hippolyta reaches out to take the hand of Frost, you know, the real Frost King in yeah, the bubble. Ed Bald. Yeah, which, uh, you know, causes everything to stop. The ace armies all fall. Uh, you know, the fight is concluded. Yeah. And, you know, we have some epilogue moments with Diana and Hippolyta, you know, saying, yeah. you know, you did what I failed to do, daughter. You know, they have a loving moment. Black right. Adam's sitting on his, his throne looking all evil like I yes. will. Yeah, he's yeah. pissed. Yeah, that's basically it. He's uh -huh. pissed. <laughs> Which is like, oh, they didn't let me kill that guy that I got yelled at for oh, for killing last time. And I was like, bro, come on. Yeah. Um, there is a lot. I just love that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a uh, comic book resetting here. Uh, the Fortress of Solitude is back in its original location, uh, uh -huh. basically wiping away the fact that Bendis moved it to the Bermuda Triangle. Um, right. The reasoning here being that basically by just abandoning the foundation that was there, Superman left a lot of tech and stuff that could be exploited, and he realized that the safer thing to do is just to rebuild on top of it so that no one can get their hands on anything. And right. so that's why he's back in the original I, fortress. Kind of like 
Batman taking him to task. Oh, it is Batman that takes him to yeah. task for that, right? He was like, yeah, you, you left up, but you didn't clean up. This is kind of on you, bud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, to be so fair, he says, like, yeah, I was careless. It, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you know. Whoops a daisy. Clark knows. But yeah, no, I thought, thought that was real, real good. Viking Prince chooses to stay in Valhalla, which mm-hmm. kind of bums me out. Because, like, the idea of getting some Viking Prince stories, because now we, we, we can't, because he died in Endless Winter. <laughs> so there's no, like, Viking Viking Prince stories that take place in between. No, nope, um, nope. But yeah. Uh, you know, some Christmassy stuff. Uh, with uh, I think Barry uh, brings John mm-hmm. back for Christmas dinner. Uh, mm-hmm. and and Bobo too. He's invited as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the story ends with uh, you know, Edward's um, frozen. He wants to be frozen with his family until they can all mm-hmm. be woken up. So it, you know, the main story ends with him sort of smelling in like an ice because now he's with his right. family. And at least in his dreams. Yeah. So you know, uh, it's which... kind of a bittersweet ending. Um. Yep. But we do end with a couple of pages, uh, back to the Santucci art. We go back yep. to after everything that happened in the past. Basically, Swamp Thing, um, the, the wizard, and Tipala are trapping Black Adam once more, and him yelling that, you know, they will all pay a price yeah. for trapping him. So even the ending kind of, again, puts us in this frame mm-hmm. of reference of Black Adam has got some, you know, a blood debt. He's got some right. payment uh, he- coming in his way. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I but I like that that they were like, yeah, you're out on work release, dude. You got to go back to jail. Yeah, you just don't get to come out because you helped, you know, well, uh, and you made things worse. <laughs> like, I, I like well, like because obviously it doesn't really add much to the cliffhanger of present day that he is pissed no. and wants revenge or he wants to like go toe to toe with the Justice but, League. But what it does do for that story is that it mm-hmm. sets up that even in the past, the idea that Black Adam was so dangerous to the the, the, yeah. the league, if you want to call him that, of that time. Right. That they were willing to imprison him once again because he's this dangerous. So it sets up the threat mm-hmm. and just how much of a, a an issue it could pose if Black Adam yeah. is in the world interacting with the heroes. And it you know, it, it puts us on on this unstable footing going forward with what's yeah. going to happen with Justice League. So no, I, I like it because we usually get isolationist conduct Black Adam, right? Think like mm-hmm. in Doomsday Clock, where he's inviting all the the supers to come there and he gives them, you know. Uh, what's that called? Uh, diplomatic community? No. Diplomatic really community. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, what is it where you can go to a another country? There's like no extradition, but that, there's there's a word for it. Extradition, you mean? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, I put the emphasis on the wrong side. Uh, uh, oh god, uh, not refuge. Uh, yeah. Asylum, political asylum. Asylum. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So he opened it up for asylum and stuff. So now we're getting one that's a he's a little bit more like wanting to be hands on in the world because he's tired of seeing it. For some reason, I just in my head, I just I had a thought of like uh, Batman leaning into some sort of villain saying, "I'll give you asylum, Arkham Asylum." Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, but no, yeah, I, I liked it. I kind of used a little bit more Santucci, you sure, know. Sure. Sure. Because we got we got to that opening the book you know oh yeah but it was nice they had we had that through line of him it was, it was actually kind of nice to end in a couple of pages of his art mm-hmm. because it was like he was the through line uh, mm-hmm. throughout the whole the whole crossover yeah. so so that was neat uh and i had a lot of fun with this crossover yeah, um me too. it set up the black adam sort of relationship going forward which i think is the biggest thing coming out of it for mm-hmm. the world going forward but it was a fun you know story uh, it was fun learning about this this uh this frost king and his past and yeah. Uh, how it interacted with various members of the, the Justice League and all their different pockets throughout all the issues. Yeah. You know, I had fun with it. Yeah, you have Viking Swamp Thing showing up and having a kaiju battle with a giant axe. It, it, was, you know, it wasn't an, a new crisis or anything. It doesn't need to be, though. No. It was just a fun crossover. No, and, and after, you know, since I've been reading comics, it's always a crisis. So having something like this that's a little bit more low-key yeah. and just a fun read, you know, that I'm happy to collect. And it, and it got me to buy, you know, Teen Titans, which I haven't bought in a while. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, uh, here's hoping for Teen Titans Academy to uh, be worth yeah. worthy of the uh, price of admission. Yep, yep. Uh, but no, I had fun with this, uh, and, and the main art in this issue is solid. You know, I, I like yeah. the artists that are involved. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I can see Gio Domenico's art in most things and be happy. So 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think you know, T maybe feels a little bit when it's a more of a talky issue because it's, it's you know he's more yeah. of an action like everyone's mm-hmm. moving around doing big things. I think yeah. is we're as opposed to say like I wouldn't want him on say Rorschach where it's all the talking heads because right. you know that's not where he shines. Uh, no, no, no. But something but, like this, where it's yeah. a big event style thing, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. All right, we we give an endless winner. Uh, um, to I'm gonna give this one an eight. Yeah, I'll agree with the. I that was a solid fun event. Um, I think it was a good, good, you know, in a month that I mean, if you take out Endless Winter, December's DC line doesn't really have a whole lot going on. It was like a few metal books, so yep. um, I'm I was happy for its inclusion, and I think it made December a fun, uh, nice little winter event. So, uh, well, I am pleased with that. Mm-hmm.